you in word and song, praising and exalting your wonderful name, for you alone are worthy. And we ask, Lord, that you be here present with us. Open our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, our speech, that all that we do and say may bring glory and praise to you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. To you be the glory and to you be the honor. In Jesus' glorious name, amen. amen. The sermon this morning is entitled, Give Thanks to the Lord. Actually, give thanks to Yahovah, which is the proper name of our Lord and our God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hallelujah. our God, the God who led them out of e Israel, out of Egypt, to freedom, to serve their Lord and their God. Amen. This past Thursday, as a nation, we celebrated a truly unique and truly unique American holiday holiday we call Thanksgiving. It's unique to us. There are others who may dabble with it and may celebrate on it, but it's truly a uniquely a, a, a American holiday. It's founding think back to the 1600s when our European ancestors fled their homelands in France, in England, throughout the European continent, fleeing religious persecution, and they came looking for freedom freedom to worship Amen. according to dictates of their heart. Amen. They came to our shores looking for a homeland where they would not be compelled to compromise the religious convictions right. or to serve as someone thought, saw fit. They came where they could be free to worship God according to to their heart's desire and according to God's leading in their lives. Amen. They came looking for a safe haven of rest where they had neither a king nor a pope to which they must bow. They came looking for freedom to worship their Lord and their God. Amen. And praise God, they found that place. Not been perfect, but it's a we're a country where freedom of religion has been prominent for many, many, many decades. And we've been blessed. Amen. For those who did come, it was anything but an easy life. If you've read, and we all studied the pilgrim when we first uh, started school, and uh, we know that many suffered many things. Many, many did not survive the boat ride, the voyage from Europe to this country. A long voyage, rough seas. Diet was not very good in those days aboard those ships. Those who did survive found hardships at every turn. No shortage in this world of sin. But these were men and women of faith. They turned to their God and found opportunities to give him thanks. Am I reminded of a, of a story in the great controversy where John Wesley is aboard one of those ships coming over here, that probably in the 1800s, probably a few years later, but he's buffeted. The ocean is, is in an uproar and uh, storming, and there are these Moravians who were, who were faithful to God and have followed John Hus. You remember John Hus, the great reformer, who was 100 years before, before Martin Luther, and he told them at his burning at the stake that in a hundred years, someone will come who you won't be able to shut up. On, and that man came, Martin Luther. Yeah. And the great revival in this world, the Reformation started in this country, in, in, in the world, I should say. And, but these were Moravians from the John Huss days. And actually Martin Luther gained much of his knowledge from the writings of John Hus. And, uh, but Wesley is on the ship with these, with these Moravians who are looked down at, scrawled at, and weren't held in very high esteem. And they must have been ha 
had to perform some duties of some kind. I don't know it was part of their, everybody had to do that or it was part of their, of, their, of their cost to come across here. But that storm hit and just the wind's blowing mightily against the ship. And these Moravians are on deck and must have been watching them. They're on deck, they're around the mast and they're holding hands. And he said, as I watched them and that storm blew and the water came across and things came flying across the, of the bow, he said, he said they were dauntless. They didn't move a bit. Their faith was held on Jesus Christ as they prayed to him. Amen. They didn't care what was going on around them as we should not care. They stood strong for Jesus. Amen. And then he watched as the wind, a gust of wind came up and the main mast broke and came down upon them. And he said, not one in that circle moved. By the grace of God, they held firm. And we live in perilous times. Amen. And God is calling us to have the faith of Jesus, the faith those Moravians had to hold on to Jesus Christ, hold on to their belief. Because our belief is not in just a man. It's a man who is God. Amen. And he is our rock in the storm. And if we're tied to him, we will hold fast. And the secret for our success in this world of sin is not the things we do only, but whom, in whom we believe, in whom we trust, in whom we cling to when things get difficult. Hallelujah. It's easy to turn away from the things of God and look to ourselves. We do that instinctively. But God calls us to trust in him when the chips are down, turn away from the world and turn to him. Right. And in all things, give praise and glory and honor to him. Because in every situation, he's in it, leading, guiding, directing, empowering us onto life. Yes. And we're in his hands. And nothing will happen to us Hallelujah. unless he first approves it. Hallelujah. Everything comes by his approval. He has the last word in everything. These were men and women of faith. They trusted in their God and found opportunities to give him thanks. As those Moravians did on the deck of that ship with a storm blowing. They too were well acquainted with scriptures like Psalms 106. and said, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto Yehovah for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Lord. And he is good and his mercy do endure forever. And we are admonished in scripture again and again and again to give him thanks, to give him praise. And I fear, knowing my life, that we don't give him enough thanks, enough praise, enough glory for all he does in our lives and for us. And for a salvation that was won by his son. If we do it, praise God. But I can tell you, it's not enough. Because God alone deserves all the glory and all the honor. Amen. His mercy endures forever, and it does. And these people, these who came to this country, these pilgrims, as we refer to them, did not hesitate to celebrate God's goodness to them, and God was good to them. Many died, many paid the price, many paid a heavy price, fleeing their persecution, but they gave all up to come here for an opportunity to serve their God as they saw fit. And they did celebrate that first Thanksgiving. And we know all about it. We've read about it again and again and again, giving thanks and praising praises to their God. They celebrated. That celebration included the natives of this land and who played a very prominent role in their survival. But they celebrated and they gave thanks to the Lord, their creator. And today, we do the same thing. I have people from Europe who come over here and they don't understand our thanksgiving. They don't understand giving God praise and glory. But that's what it's all about. We thank him for what he's provided, how he's led, how he's guided, how he's given us everything that we need. Because he is the great provider. Whatever we're short, whatever our need is, he will provide. Yes, right. He promised us that. Hallelujah. And our faith requires that we 
we take that faith, make it intentional, and trust our God for his mighty works. And he will work. And imagine the scriptures that we have, the beautiful stories of God's deliverance. Imagine if God had not allowed those patriarchs, those prophets, those men of old, those men of God, stand in the time of trial for their faith. They didn't do, he didn't do that. We'd have none of these stories to talk about. It's those people who gave themselves to God and trusted God through the storm. And when the storm was over, they stood tall in their God. So God is good, he is gracious, he is merciful, and he is loving. The Bible says God does not change. He changes not. I change not, says God. Amen. And we too are admonished to give thanks to our God continuously. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you all. Amen. Give thanks. The Bible tells us that even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we are to give thanks. Glory. Even in difficult times, we are to pray for those who persecute us right. and despitefully use us. Right. And we live in a world where people will take advantage of us. Right. How do we respond? Uh, I was told by a family, amen. I was told by a family that uh, they were taken by a scam and lost a, a good chunk of their money all that they had for their bill for the month. And guess what the first thing was that they did? Got before God on their knees and prayed and gave it to him. Hallelujah. Because he is the king of the universe. He owned the cattle on a thousand hills. The gold, the silver, all belonged to him. What a beautiful testimony to faithfulness to God. And if we are faithful to him, He'll be faithful to us. He's never failed. Hallelujah. We have not seen the, the righteous begging for food. That's right. A lot may, people may be out there doing that, but God takes care of his people. Right. It may not be everything that we want or we think we have need of, but everything he knows we need, he will provide. Right. No mistake about that. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of our God in Christ Jesus concerning us all, every one of us. The Bible says we are the people of his pasture. We are to give thanks to him. Turn to Psalm 79, verse 13. Psalm 79. Psalm is filled with praises to our God Amen. And, and thanksgiving and adoration. And I just love them beautiful to walk through those, to pray through those, and to read through those. See how God has blessed those who give him praise and glory and honor. Psalm 79, verse 13. So we, your people, the people of God, and the sheep of your pastor, will give thanks forever. Show forth your praises to all generations. And the question is, if we do not, then who will? Who? Yes. But God blesses us with the opportunity to share these testimonies, to share these mighty truths that God has given us, to share praises and glory and the works of his hand, his testimonies throughout the universe. He gives us the opportunity, the blessing, to be the bearer of those great tidings, the good news of the gospel, the good news of salvation. That's right. And if you walk with God for the length of time, you know God has blessed and been good. Amen. And no matter what we do, we can't outdo our God. Right. We cannot. We are the people and the sheep of your pasture, O Lord. And we will give thanks to you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We will show forth your praises to all generations. 
In fact, one of the scriptures, Jesus even says, he will raise in the assembly before God the praises to his God. What a God we serve. Amen. And, and he came to serve and not to be served. And we need to follow suit and look to serve others and not for others to serve us. And that's the norm in our world today. Who can serve me? Who can take care of my needs when you look to help others? Scripture yeah. provides instruction on as to how we are to give thanks unto him. Turn to Psalm 105, verse 5. Savannah read the, the first scripture. I had five, the first five listed in the bullets, and I asked her to read just the first one, because we'll go through them now. Psalm 105, verse 1 through 5. O oh, give thanks to Yahovah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among his people. That's our work, our job as God's people, the sheep of the pasture, to do that and to do it with joy, with loving kindness and faithfulness to him. My wife keeps telling me I need to smile more. And perhaps I do. Smiling doesn't come natural to me. I don't know why. I'd like to say it's the way God made me, but, you know, if it weren't for change, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Because God brought marvelous change. I don't know if I'm holding out on him or, or he just doesn't work worked on that aspect yet, but, but we are to give thanks to our Lord and our God with a smile on our face, with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength, the Bible says. And it's your strength, not because it's dependent on men or people or a government for a handout or anything else. It's because we're dependent on our God. Hallelujah. And he sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. That's right. He sent his spirit to live and dwell in us and empower to live a victorious life. And that doesn't bring joy to your heart and a smile to your face. A smiling <laughs> then nothing will. Because right. our God is a glorious God. Hallelujah. And he provides everything we need. Amen. Not what we want always. Come on and there are times I have prayed thanking God that he didn't answer my prayer according to my request because I realized how devastating that might have been to me and my family. So God knows our need, and he provides for our every need, bar none. Give thanks to Yehovah. Call upon his name. And I've always been amazed that in our Bibles, rather than writing out the name of God, Yehovah, or some may pronounce it Yahweh, some trans use a transliteration, which is Jehovah, but they put in Lord, or depends on the sentence, sometimes God is in all caps, or Lord's all caps, that denoting the, the, the name of God. He says to call upon my name. And we have intention taking God's name out of the Bible, even scripture, so we don't offend anybody. How can you be offended when you're serving the king, kings and Lord of lords and using his name as he commands us to use? Make known his deeds among the peoples. And that's all the peoples of the world. Not just people, it's plural. People, all nations, all tongues. Make no, known his deeds, and his deeds are many, and they are mighty, and they are glorious. Hallelujah. Make them known to the world. Tell everyone. Yes. We're called to go tell it to the world. Hallelujah. Sing to him. And God can appreciate my singing, he'll appreciate anyone's singing. <laughs> Occasionally, I hit the right key. Occasionally, I have the words right. Those who lead out up here must be wondering at times. <laughs> They're singing, I'm singing and not looking at the screen, just singing and, you know, I realize I'm singing the wrong words, but <laughs> they're kind, they're loving, they don't, they don't uh, say anything about it. 
but sing praises to him. In fact, uh, what is it? Uh, is it this one? I think it's this psalm. That or 100, but it's a psalm that David wrote when they enshrined the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem for the first time. He wrote this and gave this to Asaph, the leader of the, of the singers, okay? And written by the hand of David. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And he had a lot of things in life not to sing about in his life before he became king. Many things. He could have went around, woe is me, woe is me. But no, he gave thanks and glory to his God, praised his God continuously. Amen. Talk of his wondrous works, the mighty deeds he had done. Talk about these. Tell the world. Tell everyone. Because everyone needs to know about our God. Because all they'll ever, that may be all they ever hear about him, and that is salvation, that is life. Because our God has life. He's filled with life. Jesus said, I lay my life down, I take my life up. He is life. And he can give it to whomever is willing to receive it. Glory in his name, the name of our God. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord who seek after him and praise God because God is seeking those who are seeking him. Amen. Why? So he can bless them with his mighty gifts, right. his bountiful gifts, and give them salvation, Amen. which is not of man, but only of God. Glory it comes from him. Verse 4 says, Seek Yehovah and his strength. And I don't know about you, but I just seek him all the time. Because the Bible is very clear, we can do nothing of ourselves. Nothing. In fact, Jesus said myself, I can do nothing. He was totally dependent on his Father and the Spirit to lead him and guide him in this world of sin. Amen. So we seek the Lord, seek Jehovah and his strength. And if we are focused on him, attached to him, we will stand the tests that are coming upon the world and upon mankind. Amen. Seek his faith forever. I will seek, you will seek him and find him when you seek him with all your heart, the Bible says. Beautiful words of life, seeking the face of our God, coming to know him intimately and personally, and that denotes a very personal reality in our lives. Not a, 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 a situation where we work our way to heaven and become good enough. That's very personal, very intimate, seeking the face of God, being in his presence and calling upon him the Bible says, Abba, Abba, Father. Yes. Calling as a young child calls to his father. Father, come, help me. And he listens and he hears and he answers our prayers. Yes, seeking the face of our God. Remember, it says, his marvelous works. For they are marvelous, they are wonderful, they are fantastic. Who? could take a body of water, a stack of water for a million plus people to walk over on dry ground. That probably took more than five or ten minutes to do. And he did make it look easy. Marvelous works. When Israel took, began to take the land of Canaan, it's when the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant stepped into the water that the waters dried up, and they did dry up, and they stacked up, and they walked across on dry ground. God did that miracle not once, but twice, a little bit different, but did the miracle twice. They walked over on dry ground, Hallelujah. and none but our God can do that. Hallelujah. The gods of idols of gold and silver are not able to do that, can't even stand on their own, let alone do a miracle as such. Remember his marvelous works, which he hath done. And this book is filled with story after story after story after story about his mighty works. And it should work in you and I to our glory, to his glory and our, our blessings. He deserves the glory alone. Because in it, in it, as we see the mighty works of God, as we see God work in our lives, 
that's a moment for our faith to grow ever stronger in trusting in him. Yeah. As you go through trial during the week and you turn away from self, away from the world, and what we would do instinctively and turn to him and give it to him, and then we see his hand work to deliver us. Yeah. That's a faith growing moment. And we need many of those to have a faith strong enough, a faith, the faith of Jesus, because he was dauntless in the, in, the, in the eyes of adversity. He didn't hesitate, didn't stop at all. He went straight ahead. He followed his God, and we ought to follow his example. In fact, we are called to follow his example, that God in us could do glorious things and he did for his son and for the men of old, the ancient of days, or the ancient of the ancient world, and the things they did that we read about in scripture. What a glorious God we serve. Amen. All the peoples, all nations are to know God's deeds. That's right. And we are blessed to be the ones to tell of those deeds. Hallelujah. All nations are to know his holy name, and his name is holy high and lifted up. Amen. His marvelous works, his judgments in all the earth, and the judgments are true and righteous and just. And we declare them to the world, to all the world, because that is the only means to salvation. Right. It's through him, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There's no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Isaiah assures us that his mighty acts shall be made known to the sons of men, all mankind, every per people, every nation, every tongue, every tribe. Turn to Psalms 145, verse 9. We'll begin there. Psalm 145, verse 9, read through 13. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Everything he's created, including us, his tender mercies are over us. Yes, and Peter and others in the New Testament talk about us showing those same tender mercies to our brothers and our sisters who are struggling in this world of sin, who are struggling with life, finances, relationships, you name it, we are struggling. Right. Everyone is all under the burden and the heavy weight of sin. Yeah. But God calls us to show them, to lead them back to the things of God, to guide them, to edify them, to lift them up with his tender mercies. Because he showed those mercies to us continuously. That's right. And we are to show those to others. Amen. Not the hard, direct approach that many of us take. We are to Show the tender mercies. Be kind and loving and compassionate. Because the reality is, who changes the heart? Who alone changes the heart? God, not us. I can say things that I might be sorry for or think they deserve it. But I can't change their heart. Only God can. And to say those things that are on my mind might impede their coming to a knowledge of their Lord and their God and their Savior. It might keep them from knowing him and being saved. And I don't want that on my conscience, never. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all. Everything is governed by his tender mercies. Verse 10, all your works shall praise you, Lord. All the works, everything you've done is you'll bring praise to you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. And I pray that his people, his saints, are praising him and blessing him. Hallelujah. Always. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And we live in that kingdom here in this world. Jesus said, you're not, you're of the world, but not, you're in the world, but not of the world. Right. We are the kingdom of God in this world of sin. It's a bastion of, of a safe haven for those who are of God, protected by his covering. 
He protects us. He keeps us. He guides us. All these things he does for us. His kingdom. We are pilgrims in this world looking for a city whose builder and founder is God. Amen. Looking to be out of this world and with him. And one day soon he will come. The heavens will part and he will call the dead in Christ up and they shall be raised incorruptible. And as they rise up, Paul said that we who are alive shall be caught up with them in the air and thus shall we always be with the Lord. What a glorious, wonderful God that we serve. And we are part of his kingdom in this world of sin. And Jesus says, fear not, I will overcome the world. And anything you're facing in your life, no matter what it may be, by God's grace, you too, we too shall all overcome. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. And when you talk about power, there's much to talk about. Because Paul tells us that the kingdom of God comes not in word, but in power. Wow. And that spirit is ours. And he comes in power as well to bring change and transformation, to change our hearts into hearts of flesh and to give a desire to walk with God in this world of sin. Power. Not to, not to serve myself, but power to serve others. And there's a huge difference there. Verse 12, to take down, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts. Repeat it here again. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard the glorious thing God prepared for his people. We can't begin to even imagine what we're headed for. We don't know. We can anticipate the world, what they're going to do. But the things of God, wow. Right. Glorious. Eternal. Amen. Wow. Staggers the imagination. Yeah. And yet, we are recipients of what God has prepared for us by faith in Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. And, and if we love Jesus, if we have faith in him, and then our relationship with him will cause change in our lives so that we stop doing those things that are not of God and begin doing those things that are of God to his glory and to his honor. Amen. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. When this world ends, his will continue to go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Each eon without end, eternity, never to end. Hallelujah. And we can't imagine that, but that's the reality of what God's word makes very clear to us, to his people. Amen. We are to give praise and thanksgiving, lest we forget. Lest we forget. Deuteronomy 4, verse 7 and 9. Turn to Deuteronomy 4, verse 7 and 9. Do we forget? Often, if you get like me, my later years, I forget quite regularly. I got down to a science. It's not always good, but I got down to a science. I tell people, I've forgotten more than you can ever know because I've been forgetting since I was a young boy. I forgot everything I knew at least once, maybe a dozen times. Deuteronomy 4, verse 7. He asked the question, for what great nation is there that has God so near to them. Who? Who else has a God like ours? A God who told Moses to build the tabernacle. Why? That I may dwell among you in your midst. There is no other God like ours. As the Lord our God is with us. And he is with us. Never leave us nor forsake us with us forever and ever and ever. We're without end. Amen. For whatever reason we may call upon him, he answers. His arm is not too short. He is mighty, he is powerful. And whatever he decides to do, it will be done. And none can stop it. 
none can short circuit the process of God. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in the law which I have set before you this day? And again, I say there is none. None. And if we live by these laws, by these statutes, and then we aren't entangled with all the things that come as a result of doing these things. And we are free in Christ, and we are free indeed. Amen. Obedience. God calls us to obedience. Every one of us, that obedience brings freedom. Obedience to him brings freedom in everything else in this world of sin. Yeah. And the world of sin is stacked against us. Yeah. And we need all the help we can get. And that obedience to God is the beginning of that help. Yeah. And we stay true to him. He'll stay true to us. Amen. Verse 9 says, Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself lest you forget. Had the church forgotten? Had the people of God forgotten? I look at the world today. I look at our denomination. I look at the Protestant denominations. And I see we have forgotten. We have forgotten how God led the past. As he led in the past, you lead in the future. That's right. But all, as this week, they, uh, last week, they finished up the COP27 meetings and there was a little protest uh, by some of the dignitaries. There was a big pomp and ceremony going on there and, you know, elevating themselves, I guess, and, and uh, they smashed uh, sim a similitude of the Ten Commandments because they didn't get what they wanted. And all those Ten Commandments, those new Ten Commandments looking for are about the climate, about ecology. Doesn't say a word about God, nothing about God, about his grace, his mercy, his love, his son Jesus. Nothing, nothing, nothing about salvation. It's all about the world and the ecology yes. and us being subservient to it. God called us to be faithful to his creation because he created it and it gave us dominion. That's right. But what they're talking about is pure, unadulterated paganism. Come on now. And God called us to stay away from paganism That's right. in every form. Only take heed to yourself and diligently you keep yourself lest you forget the things your eyes have seen. When I was a young boy, a very wise woman told me, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Now, that wasn't a statement of fact, but I got the point. And in this day and age, what can you believe? The government, the news media, who do you believe? What do you believe? You give them five minutes and the chore story changes. The word of God never changes. In that you can trust, put your, put your surety in the word of God because God said, I change not. For, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, the things, the glory thing God has done for them. That should encourage their faith. And God, they can forget. And we most certainly do forget on a regular basis. Yes. Unless they depart from your heart. You lose your love for God and your knowledge of the things he has done for you. The wonderful things he has done in your life. And that is a constant fear for us who are Christians who call ourselves by his name. Yes. Because we can lose the salvation we have. Right. It's not guaranteed to us unless we continue to walk in him. I the preacher years ago who would talk about a, a, uh, 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 a uh, doctrine of, of, of a church. And uh, he said, I believe in once saved, always saved. And everybody in the church has held their breath. Wow. Is he really saying that? As long as you stay saved, he would put on the end. Once saved, always saved, as long as you stay saved, because salvation is a continual process of growing in Christ and growing in your Lord and God. It's not once and done forever. Live any way you want, do whatever you want. It's a constant, continuous walk with God. And he says, lest ye depart from the things of the heart. And God's about the heart. 
He said he'll give us, take our stony heart out and give us a heart of flesh. Right. And we need that heart of flesh. We need to show the tender mercies of God in our lives and to those around us. Amen. And he says, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Keep carrying on the message. Make sure everybody knows those who are of the Jewish faith and those who are not. Make sure they know and understand the glorious things of God. Praising and thanksgiving to God confirm they reinforce the wonders of God in our hearts and in our minds. As we look at these things, as we read them continually, bring them into our hearts and our minds, they take hold, they solidify, and they become a reality for us. We assimilate them into our being. And those things that are part of us are hard to rid of in our lives. I grew up as a, as a Lutheran. And getting over some of those things I believed was difficult. But by God's grace, like you, we were able to do that. And I love the church. I love the people. But I found truth I hadn't found anywhere else. We are to keep the testimonies of God before us lest we forget. And that's a continuous, ongoing danger for us, a real danger for us that we forget. Rehearsing these marvelous works of God and keeping them ever before us. Paul, in the New Testament, the Old Testament talks about keeping us set on him, focused on him. And that's the thing to this world, being conformed not to this world, but to the things of God. That's where our focus needs to be. And all along the way, giving thanks, giving and praise to him, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Keep them ever before us. The thing God ever before us that will ensure that we will not forget and that they do not part, depart from our hearts. If they're gone from our hearts. We've lost that first love. We've lost everything. Because nothing in this world matters at all. Let me read a quote here from, from Sister White. The dealings of God with his people should often be often repeated. The dealings of God with his people should often be repeated. Your walk with God every day, how he's led, how he's got, how he's blessed, how he's kept you away from something that you find out later was a blessing should be repeated often in our lives. We need to remember these things, write them down, etch them in our mind, sear them in permanently. She said, how frequently were the wayward marks set up by the Lord in his dealings with ancient Israel? And I will tell you continuously, the way marks were there for them to look back at and to guide them and direct them in their walk with God. That he led yesterday, so he'll lead today. Lest they should forget the history of the past. He commanded Moses to frame these events in songs and parents might teach them to their children and pass it, the legacy on. We are not to forget Amen. and lose our salvation. It is remembering these way more, way work, way marks set up by the Lord, our, our God, and keeping them constantly before us that we grow more familiar and they become more natural to us, thus flowing from us spontaneously, praises from our lips like honey from a honeycomb. And they should be spontaneous because praise is spontaneous. Amen. Davis shows us that. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 19. I want to read to you the prayer of uh, Hezekiah. Hezekiah was confronted by the Assyrian army, and they made command and denounced the, our Lord, our God. He, he, Hezekiah is Lord and God. And he goes to God, and uh, he prays a beautiful prayer. And it's a prayer that we should all have fresh in our minds and, and come to pray like he did pray. 2 Kings 19, verse 15. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, Yehovah, and said, Yehovah, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God. At this point, he had not forgotten who his God was. 
You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth are God. You have made the heavens and the earth and the world has forgotten who made the heavens and the earth. It just happened. The Big Bang. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, says Hezekiah, O Lord, Jehovah, and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God, a direct affront to the God of Israel. In opposition to him, as was Pharaoh of Egypt in the days of Exodus. Truly, Lord, the king of Assyria had laid waste to the nations and their lands, and they had. And we see that coming here, that the governments of the world will dictate and demand we follow suit and do things their way, or else, though things need to go to God, we need to trust in him, Bright, invite him to every problem we have, Amen. the small ones and the big ones. They have laid waste to the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire for they were not gods, but the work of the men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Therefore, now therefore, O Yehovah, I pray, Save us from his hand and from all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yehovah Elohim, God alone. You alone are God. A beautiful prayer. Pray to him, give him glory to him. That's what our life should look like. Speaking the things of God, the words of God. Jesus spoke much in the New Testament. Give us much, much to look at. And when asked a question, more than not, he answered with a scripture. And it behoove us to do the same thing. God called us to go with the world, and sin would not have us to go. Take the path of least resistance. Like the tempter tempted Jesus in the desert those 40 days. Take the path of least resistance. Don't go. To talk of God's wondrous works, to make known his deeds. The devil doesn't want that. To remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders, and the judgment of his mouth. Why? That we may never, never, never forget the things of God and how he's worked in our lives so wonderfully, so marvelously, so miraculously. Amen. Nor that these things should depart from our hearts lest we lose our faith and lose our salvation. That's right. Because there's only one who can provide. Amen. He calls us to give thanksgiving and praise and honor to him. Hallelujah. And not to men and not to this world. That's right. And today the world would have you elevating, elevating the ecology, our, our, our ecosystem, as it were a god. I'm going to close with, with Psalms 100, verse 3 through 5. Know that Yahovah, he is God. Hallelujah. It is he who has made us. Make no mistake about it. The world may teach what they want, but we know from Scripture that it is him who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. He has made us. And not we ourselves, nothing to do with it, and we have no glory in it. Right. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. His people, his sons and daughters, his chosen, and the sheep of his pasture. Right. Following our great shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Right. Keeping our eyes on him. Amen. Forsaking the world and all that the world has. Forsaking those things. Keeping our eyes on him. For it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And I pray this morning that when you entered this morning, you had praises and thanksgiving on your lips to your God hallelujah. who created you and brought you here this morning. Glory, Be thankful to him and bless his name. Yes. 
I always struggle with blessing God's name. How can I, who am nothing, bless the name of my God? But I do bless him. Amen. Don't understand, but I bless him. Amen. And I'm thankful to him. Yes, For the Lord, Yahovah, is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures unto all generations. We live in a very thankless world. Yes. People take and on occasion will offer a word of thank you. But most take expecting to receive it. And God calls us to give thanks and praise to him. Amen. And this truly unique holiday we just celebrated, Thanksgiving, is not about us. It's about him. He provided for our early ancestors, gave them life, had the native people help them in their walk in this world of sin. And many died that first winter. But God saw many through. And this is a truly unique Christian, I should say was a uniquely Christian holiday and uniquely American. And the holiday is determined by what we believe and what we choose to do. And as for me and my family, I choose to follow God and give him glory, praise, and honor that he alone deserves to his glory and his honor and praise be to him. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Gracious Father, we are blessed beyond measure in this country and here in our local church and in our community. And we are thankful for all you've done, for all the ways you've blessed us and kept us and sustained us in this world of sin. Because the devil had his way, we've been gone a long time ago. And I want to thank you and praise you for that. And I ask that you would cause your people, the sheep of your fold, your pasture, your sons and daughters, give them hearts that are truly thankful for you or thankful to you for all you have done, for your wonderful deeds, your marvelous works, for all the things that you have done that we read in Scripture and you do for us personally day in and day out. We are thankful and we praise you and ask your blessing upon this people in your name to your glory and to your honor, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And sir, we'll have you up here after the song. We'll have you come up, okay?